Yesterday, I interviewed Senator Patrick Brazo, an Aboriginal Canadian, about what's going on within the Assembly of First Nations and the attempt to undermine the Grand Chief. Here's what he told me. Senator Brazo, a new poll has come out by Forum Research that says Canadians are skeptical of the Idle No More movement, but here's what fascinated me. Canadians who self-identify as Aboriginal are extra skeptical of Idle No More. How can that be? I thought this was supposed to be a grassroots Indian movement. Well, let's not forget Idle No More began in opposition to Bill C-45, uh, but now what we're seeing is, is different factions uh, within Idle No More uh, uh, complaining about uh, everything that's ever gone wrong in terms of Aboriginal issues in this country. And uh, when I see some protests across the country having more non-Aboriginal uh, people participate than Aboriginal, uh, well, we have to start asking some questions in terms of who really is involved here. You know, it's a great point. Over the weekend, there was an I don't know more protest outside our office here at The Sun, but the vast majority of people were not Indian. I recognized a lot of them from Occupy Toronto. There were some Palestinian activists. There was uh, the Ontario Federation of Labour. I think that it, it's a brand that everyone's trying to get a piece of, uh, and everyone's saying, no, no, I'm I don't know more. No, 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 I'm I don't know more. And I think actually real Indian issues like how can we fix jobs and housing and education are totally getting ignored. Maybe that's why real Indians don't like Idle so more. I don't know more so much. Well, I think you might be right. Uh, obviously, uh, in terms of Idle No More, in terms of the, the, the Aboriginal participants, uh, obviously, and I've always said, there, there are some legitimate claims uh, that need to be addressed. But unfortunately, uh, some non-Aboriginal people who are participating in this are, are, are diluting the real issues. And I don't think it's a help to uh, Aboriginal peoples at all. Well, you and I have been talking about Indian affairs for more than a year. You know it's something that's on my mind. I regard the Indian Act as an outdated and even racist piece of legislation. So I actually look forward to a big national discussion, but I don't see it being very practical. Let me ask you a question. You used to be uh, a, a senior political leader in the Aboriginal movement. You're an Indian, of course, yourself. You were, you were a chief. Tell me what's going on in Indian politics, because you've got the Assembly of First Nations, you got Sean Atlio, who was elected as the Grand Chief for all the bands, but some of the folks trying to tear him down, that, that's sort of internal Indian politics, am I right? Well, uh, like in all politics, there, there's always factions and, and uh, divisions uh, within any uh, political uh, structure, and uh, it's no different for the Assembly of First Nations. But we must not forget that three uh, of the, the high-profile uh, uh, organizers in Idle No More uh, were three failed candidates who ran against Sean Atlio. Who were they? And we know Pam Palmiter was one of them. Who were the others who, uh, are trying to, who ran against Atlio and lost? Well, there's uh, Ms. Gabriel from, uh, from uh, Montreal. Uh, and there's also uh, uh, Miss uh, Joan Jack from uh, Manitoba, I believe. Uh, so here are three individuals who, uh, who ran against Sean Atlio, uh, lost uh, badly, uh, and they are, uh, w along with others, uh, uh, creating the division within the Assembly of First Nations and, and not respecting the political process that we have in place to negotiate with the government of Canada. Senator, i got to tell you, what's so frustrating is I think that there's a lot of goodwill towards Indians in Canada. I mean, yes, there's a lot of problems, and I think non-Indians know that, and people say, geez, you know, we, let's be generous, let's make up for past errors. If there was some moral wrongs in the past, let's apologize, let's fix it. So I actually think there's an enormous amount of goodwill, but I think a lot of that goodwill has been dissipated or burnt up in this internal fight. I, I think it's actually hurting the cause of Aboriginals in Canada. Am I being too pessimistic? Not at all, and as a matter of fact, uh, in, in my view, in my personal view, it, it all boils down to accountability. I know that many uh, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canadians uh, want to improve the living conditions of, of Aboriginal peoples. There's no doubt about that. But we have to have accountability mechanisms in place to ensure that, that money is going to the right places, it is being targeted uh, to, to the right people, and for the people to have access to those funds. Uh, and if nobody can answer those questions, uh, then we are, we, have, we are in serious trouble. And so if we have those accountability mechanisms in place, uh, we're going to know exactly if more money is needed to be put in the system uh, or uh, perhaps uh, just uh, find better ways of, of targeting money. I tell you, I, the people who decided to make Ter Teresa Spence the uh, poster girl for this movement really bet on the wrong person. I think she's discredited. But I want to ask you this. Sean Atlio, I don't think enough Canadians know that much about him because I don't think he's a showboat like Teresa Spence or some of the other chiefs are. 
Can you tell me a little bit about Sean Atley? I'll put it, take off your partisan hat. I know you're a conservative. I have no clue about Sean Atlio's politics. Is he open-minded? Is he nonpartisan? Is he constructive? Is he entrepreneurial? And then I want to throw in one more question to that. Is he at risk of being recalled, or uh, you know, is there a legal way to have a revolution in the Assembly of First Nations? I know that's a bunch of questions, but tell me who Sean Atlio is, and is he safe? Well, first, I'll answer your, your second question. Uh, it would be a shame if, uh, if any attempt to, to discredit him or to oust him out of power uh, were to occur, because at the end of the day, it is the chiefs themselves who have the right and the privilege to vote for their national chief. And so I find it very unfortunate that, that some uh, decided uh, several days ago not to stand behind National Chief Atlio when they have the right to, to vote for them. Now, I've known uh, Sean Atlio for, for quite a number of years. Obviously, in my former capacity, uh, I did uh, work together. We did attend certain meetings and conferences together. Uh, he's a pragmatic person. He's very educated. He's very business-oriented. Uh, and, he's, and he's somebody who, who likes to, to negotiate uh, rather than, than, than protest. And uh, obviously, uh, he's got uh, some very important work to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, chiefs have to stand behind him because the Assembly of First Nations, whether people like it or not, is the only political vehicle that First Nations people have to negotiate with the government of Canada. And so I think that uh, Miss Spence and, and all the detractors out there should, uh, should allow Chief Atlio to do the job that he was elected to do. Well, he certainly seems to be presentable and credible. I mean, he, uh, from what I've seen of him in the media, I mean, he's not a media hound the way she is. But look, he got 630 plus Indian bands. You've got to have one. But you, the Prime Minister of Canada cannot have 633 individual meetings. Nothing would ever get accomplished. I, I, the Assembly of First Nations has to choose one guy. Let me ask you a question. We're almost out of time. If there was a, another vote right now, for the Grand Chief. Do you think Sean Atlio would get the support of the quiet majority, the silent majority of chiefs? Or do you think the rabble rousers, the Pam Palmeters and the Teresa Spences, do you think they've whipped things up enough that they would have a more radical chief as the boss? Well, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, obviously, he was elected in last uh, July, uh, and uh, obviously a, f a few months have gone by, and, uh, and we've seen some of the radicals trying to discredit him. But I think at the end of the day, uh, National Chief Atlio has worked uh, collaboratively with the Prime Minister uh, for the benefit of First Nations people, and, and I know that he's still willing to do that. Uh, however, there's some uh, bad apples out there uh, trying to, uh, to do him wrong.